You've heard me talk a lot about is, and my concern is driveline geometry. I know that the LS is sitting up higher in the front than what the small block Chevy did. I've done nothing to the back where the transmission mounts, um, so it's at the same height. So basically the engine I know is at more of an angle than what the small block Chevy was. I took some measurements before we pulled out the small block. Um, I didn't really cover those at the time, but let me set it up. I'll show you what I did. I think it's going to turn out to be pretty useful. So what I did was tried to measure to the center of the crank pulley, which is what's the important part of the engine, um, to some point on the frame so I knew what the height of it was. Um, and how I did that was, you'll see on the frame, see that line there and an X and a line there and an X. What I did was I put a straight edge across there and then measured down to the center of the crank on the small block Chevy. And it was one and seven eighths of an inch down from the level. Let me put the, uh, the level of the straight edge up there and you'll kind of see what I mean. So there's a straight edge. So basically, on the marks, the X means what side of the line the straight edge will go on. So line up that one and line up this one. So now I know that my reference point when I measured the small block Chevy is exactly in the, uh, in the same position. So then we'll measure down essentially to the center of the crank bolt and see where we're at with the new engine versus the old one. So this is the measurement I want to make to that center of that crank pulley. On the small block it was one and seven eighths of an inch. This one on the lines here. This one is um, again a little bit of an eye here, but it looks like about an inch. So the engine is seven eighths of an inch up higher at the crank, which is what counts. Another dimension on the engine counts. So in theory, if I were to raise up the back of the engine by the transmission mount by an inch, it should work. So what I'm going to do is I made up some spacers. I'm going to go and see if there's enough room to put a spacer in underneath that transmission mount. So I grabbed some scrap pieces of steel from the steel box at work. Um, this one here is an uh, inch. You can see that? It's an inch thick. Um, I said I needed, what, seven eighths is what the difference was. So we're going to see if this fits in there and then I'll make a nicer mount when uh, it comes time to actually get the engine mounted in there. But let's see if there's enough room to raise the back of the transmission up this much. Right, let me try to show you what I did here. Um, so I... Well, it's hard to see. That's the back of the back of the transmission there. Okay, That's the cross member. So what I did was I took the bolts out right there in those two holes and then used that red jack to jack up the back of the trans. When I measure through the holes to the transmission, I'm up about only three quarters of an inch. And then what happens is the transmission is hitting the floor in a bunch of spots. So, it's not going to be as easy as just putting a spacer in. Now, this transmission mount flexes when you put the weight of everything on it, probably down a quarter of an inch. Um, but that trans is way too close to the floor. So I got to think about this one because that driveline geometry has got to be right. The other option is to um, get adjustable control arms for the rear axle to tilt it to get it at more of the right angle. Either way, um, um, got to kind of think. I also call it a success even with the driveline geometry because now I kind of know what I'm dealing with. Um, that transmission hitting the bottom of the floor, that's going to be a tough one. Um, because um, that means cutting up the floor. Which, uh, if you remember, the transmission's a Tramac TKO 600. It's a lot bigger trans. Um, I had to cut up the floor a little bit to get it in. Um, if I still had the old Muncie, there'd be plenty of room to do this. Although I wouldn't put a Muncie behind this engine anyways. So, um, got to do a little research and figure that out. So, stay tuned.